America! All right, it's Tuesday, my dude. We're gonna talk about some awesome stuff today, specifically motors, oscillations, and vibrations on quads, even brand new quads that have oscillations and troubleshooting and kind of experience that I've experienced where uh, I, you know, I figured something out over time and it took forever and it was kind of counterintuitive as far as how it actually was resolved. Um, but it makes sense now, you know, hindsight's 2020, and it didn't really dawn on me until doing this recently that you know that, that what I'm talking about getting rid of oscillations on a new quad was a reality and what exactly caused it to have oscillations and all of this nonsense so in this video I'm going to talk about motors and how they vibrate what makes a quad have oscillations and we'll talk about other things that make quads have oscillations tuning uh, frame flexibility frame stiffness all of that but mainly this will be about uh, motors bells and changing things out and then having chasing your tail with tuning because I know I've had issues with tuning in the past um, and I have some quads that fly really good and some quads that don't and I have a video on this actually about old like gear getting old and then that becoming you know what's the lifespan of an actual drone um, like drone components so let me tell you about what happened today that kind of dawned on me uh, as far as like you know I have one quad that flies really well and I have a backup quad that I've just always hated and it's been brand new ever since I got it I built it I built three quads all at once the steel v2s came out uh, as far as like I got pre-production samples the pre-production samples essentially are exactly like the production model except they have the team black sheep logo and the middle finger instead of the screw and the ethics logo so when I got those, they were like super pre-production. Uh, I got like 16 of them or something. And I just put them all on my quads because why not? Uh, it's the version two, it's got the steel shaft. So I built like four brand new quads. All of them have KISS V2. All of them have uh, Mr. Steel V2s on them, but they're, like I said, the pre-production model. All of them are Mr. Steel aliens. Like they're identical. I built them all myself. Everything was perfect. So I've had all of these quads and I've flown all of them diff like at different times, but there's always been this one quad that flew really, really well, and that is this beast right here. Now, this beast, I don't know why, but I have been flying it for seven or eight months now. I have not changed anything on it. I think the only thing I've changed is the top plate, um, and that's it literally oh and I changed the receiver so then the nano crossfire receivers came out hey calm down over there guy that's all I've done I haven't changed anything this thing is super old school uh, and we'll talk about frame flexibility and stuff later because this thing is definitely not as stiff as it used to be compared to a brand new alien like right here or another brand new alien right here and why are the motors off and I'll talk to you about that right now so this morning um, I went out and flew with Eric and I had crashed this the other day when I was flying with Chad Nowak and it um, it wasn't a hard crash but this camera is pretty old and it the camera now looks like it's melting and I couldn't fly it obviously because I didn't have any camera anymore so uh, I was kind of pissed about that and I busted out my backup quad which is this quad right here so this has been my backup quad and it is pretty much brand new other than like a few hard landings just skidding on the concrete and stuff like it's pretty new it has no real dings or dents or anything on it uh, all of the components are super clean still and there's not a lot of just dirt in general like this quad is is very very new and it's never really flown well and I took it out this morning we hiked up this little mountain thing and Eric and I and flew from the top of it and did some long-range stuff and for me like long range is not really about going and ripping somewhere really far away it's about just getting there and you know getting smooth flowy shots and that quad in particular had extreme amounts of mid throttle oscillations and I was like what the hell is going on I took it down um, tuned it like adjusted PIDs adjusted the LPF filters to just obnoxious amounts to where it should have completely gotten rid of any oscillation that was in the quad and it didn't get rid of it and I was very concerned at that point I'm like this is KISS V2 should totally be able to get it, get rid of all these oscillations so anyways brought it back and I had a conversation with a friend of mine a couple months ago his name is Chris Love 
uh, just a buddy that I met at an event that we just kind of hit it off. And anyways, he was talking to me about motors and he was talking to me about specifically about the V2s and he's like, yo, I got some of these and some of them are a little bit out of balance compared to the others. Like he has one that's really smooth and he has one that's super out of balance, but it's not super. Like I'll show you what he's talking about um, on the KISS thing, the motor testing tab. So anyways, when I say out of balance, we're talking about when you test it on the computer and it shows up and it's vibrating the, the, the gyro. Um, and I will show you how to do that in a second. But like I said, Chris said, hey, some of these things are out of balance. Um, should I be concerned? I'm like, no, you shouldn't because I don't have any problems with them. The production models are very much good to go. It was the pre-production models that had some issues with balancing, but all the QC got sorted out um, before they went to production. Obviously some can slip through because they're all hand balanced, but for the most part, uh, if you have a problem with any of these, just let us know, uh, let TBS know, they'll send you a new one. Um, but that's kind of what we're here for is to make sure everything is you know, good, the quality control is under control. If you have a problem, again, let, let me know because uh, you can get, we can get it sorted and it'll help us in the long run. But regardless, he had some motors that were out of balance. And what I told him was like, look, dude, you can spend all day balancing your motors, but the first crash you have, they're going to be out of balance. So, you know, yeah, you can go on your computer and you can hook it up and you can set it up to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to go into the motor test tab, which I will show you right now to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is my, my beater quad, the one that's been, you know, super buttery for me forever, right? Um, when you see what these motors are going to do on this computer screen, you're probably going to disregard everything that you've ever heard from anyone about balancing anything. You know, I used to balance all my props and do all kinds of gnarly stuff back in the day to try to get rid of oscillations. Um, so let me let me show you what I'm talking about when I talk about motor testing. So if you go into the KISS GUI, uh, for those people that do want my PIDs, there they are. You can go ahead and screenshot them, put them all over the internet. They're not any different. I, uh, over time, increase rate, or increase RC rate and reduce rate so that I can get rid of some of that expo to get more of a linear feel. But other than that, pretty much these PIDs are exactly like the V1 PIDs, except I've increased the P's slightly because with the V2 KISS, you can increase the P's. So anyways, let, let's, so you go into KISS, we're gonna do a motor test. So I turn the quad on with the props off. I have it plugged into the USB. I have my radio on, I go into KISS here and I go to advanced output. I click motor test. I say, yes, I know what I'm doing because I don't have the props on. And then you'll see this little bar down here, which is actually correlated with the gyro on the aircraft. So when you shake it or do stuff to it, you can see it moving on the screen and you can see it coming through on the gyro reading, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test a motor. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna click individually test motor, which is this little tab that I clicked right there. Then we're gonna go over here, we're gonna click motor one, and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna arm the quad. And you'll see that now motor one is spinning, right? And I'm gonna spool up, right? I can do whatever I need to do. So if you look on this screen, you'll see that there are some some lines and stuff, right? So this is about mid throttle. That's a little bit like 65, 70 percent, 80 percent, yeah, 85. That's about 90. That's about 100. Yeah, sorry, 90, 95, and then 100. So you saw at 90, about 90 percent. Look how bad that is. You can hear it. It's really loud, right? You can see it, it's freaking obnoxiously out of balance. Or maybe not out of balance, but it's obnoxiously noisy. So all of the motors are like that on this quad. And this quad is my smoothest quad. I have very rarely have issues with this quad with vibrations. And the only time I really do is when I go to a new environment that's either at a really high altitude or something like that, um, or the, usually it's high altitude to be quite honest. Uh, when the air is thinner, you need to retune if you really want crystal like clean footage. And I am, get too lazy and I just don't really care. And when I'm flying, like in some of those videos where I was traveling across the country, they're like, why do you have jello? I'm like, dude, first of all, I'm flying in the middle of the day, which is the most obvious time to fly for jello. It doesn't matter what quad you've had. 
if you run no ND filter in the middle of the day on 60 FPS, you're probably going to see jello regardless of how smooth your quad is. I dare people to go out there and make videos midday, uh, like direct sunlight with a GoPro in 60 FPS, because if you cannot get jello on consistent flights, like not just one flight, like fly an entire day, and I guarantee you, you will see jello. Um, but with that being said, uh, you gotta like that's why a lot of people fly at dusk to get rid of some of that harsh lighting. It kind of helps reduce the jello, and that's why a lot of people fly on 30 fps. There are a lot of reasons that a lot of, that people fly specific things, specific times of day, and specific environments to uh, beat around the bush of the whole jello situation. Um, but kind of the entire encompassing act of this video is to show you that. My butteriest quad. This is the smoothest quad that I have, and it's freaking dead. Like the arms are twistable. Like the actual rigidity of the frame is is severely compromised because of how old it is. This thing is probably eight months old. Like been full on bashed and beaten for the last eight months. Like you shouldn't be able to bend an alien at all. I'm not really trying that hard to bend it, and it's it's bending. Uh, this is twisty. Like you can, this actually arm is pretty stiff. How you can tell like arms are getting delaminated over time because there's so much vibrations going through the quad. And this is just a generic thing with quad lifespan. So the more you fly it, the more vibrations come from the motors. It's just inherent that you're gonna fly with a quad with a broken prop or you're gonna fly with something that's gonna cause vibrations and eventually it's gonna wear on the arms and they're gonna delaminate inside and they begin to get twisty. And like I said, this quad is about eight months old and it's not in the best shape in the world but it is super smooth and i would this is the quad that i would want to have as my reliable butter quad if i were to go out and fly and i wanted clean video and i have these quads over here that are freaking brand new why are they why are they oscillating why is there problems these are brand new they should have no problems right well yes i agree that if you had all four motors that were equally uh smooth from the beginning and you crashed and hit a bell then usually you get oscillations, right? So my theory, it's not really a theory, it's kind of a proven thing, <laughs> proven thing, but I just, it dawned upon me this morning really, uh, when I was testing, that if you have a brand new quad and you have three motors that are extremely well balanced, and then you have one really noisy motor, that's usually when you start to introduce oscillations into the quad because you have one motor that's kind of uneven. It's like it's like this quad, for example. All of the motors are shitty, so the quad flies smooth. Where when I have a brand new quad, three of the motors are smooth, and this one in particular was really, really noisy. And like I said, these are pre-production models, so don't think that all of my motors are inconsistent. Just this particular quad, again, like this is a production model because it has ethics on it. This is a pre-production because it says TBS. So, and it wasn't the bell in particular on these motors. It was actually the stator, the bearings were bad. Like I had to modify these things. Like I had to sand down this. These, uh, you can see on the pre-productions, like this is eating through because there's too much of a lip there. Like a lot was changed on the pre-productions from the actual production model. So you can't compare the pre-production to the production now but like I said this quad doesn't fly very well it's brand new literally out of the box everything is brand new and the reasoning is is because one of the motors is noisy and the rest of them are smooth same thing with this quad one of the motors was extremely noisy well in this particular case this motor was extremely smooth and all of these were extremely noisy so I'm just gonna replace all of them because this is the only one, that's the pre, that's the production model. The only smooth one on the entire quad was the production model one. And the rest of them are smoked. And I put this one back on there so that I could show how much vibration was there. But yeah, I ended up scrapping that video and making a new one because you know I wanted to talk to you about it. So again, I have four brand new quads here. This is the only one that's old, that's like my favorite. And I'm trying to make things work again and it's been frustrating me because I've had this quad that's been super buttery and I've, no, I've not wanted to fly the new quads because the new quads just had vibration problems and I think I figured out why and it's because the motors are inconsistently uh, noisy especially with the pre-production model motors so 
I'm gonna go ahead and just swap out all new motors on there and uh, yeah and one last thing as far as oscillations are concerned you can have oscillations based on an arm being floppy um, you can have oscillations by usually if you dent one bell crashing denting a bell causing a lot of noise on one arm that usually causes it I guess the, the end all result is that if you have one arm that has a shitty motor on it it's gonna induce more oscillations than if you have all shitty motors or all new motors that's kind of the the takeaway from this and then also frame design uh, if you have a stiffer frame it's gonna help reduce some of those oscillations gonna make tuning a little bit easier gonna give you a better flight characteristic um, so yeah I hope you learned something today I am at Eric's shop we're about to go to lunch and hopefully my succulents don't decide they uh, want to go to the moon what are you doing over here bro got anything good you just fucking OCD and out cleaning stuff up yeah man cleaning all the mad aluminum all that mad dustage when you work with aluminum you get fucked. That's gross. <laughs> Anybody want a Viper? 18 grand right now. I get three of it. 17.5. 17.5? went down. Come get it. It's got frame damage. Buy it though. It's got a V10 in it, my dudes. The hood The hood is good. Everything's solid except that the fucking uh, little bit of the frame. Yep. And that wheel. That wheel is smoked. That wheel is so that smoked. That wheel and that tire. You might need a new tire. The wheel, totally salvageable. Totally holds a bead, my dude. Dude, you see the wheel I replaced it with? Yeah, it's fucking soft. Fucking Super dude. lightweight. Super lightweight. Handles this thing. No no problem. That's the way to go. Uh-huh. Come get your Viper. Motherfucking Dayton's. <laughs> Motherfucking Dayton's. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good Tuesday, my dudes.